Hi. Hello. Hi. Welcome to another episode of My Favorite Alpha. This is our first episode shooting in New York, and I'm here at JFK to pick up our guest who's flying in from LA. Let's go pick him up. I'm smiling actually really big, but you can't tell me. It's Ginger Root! Here I go. Uh, please use that one. Who was it that was also into into IMO? As Dylan. Dylan. I'm sorry, Dylan. I wish you were here too. We <laughs> talk about <laughs> the, conver Dylan. the conversation will be three hours or something if Dylan was here too. So let me know when season two comes out. <laughs> there you go. Of uh, my favorite alpha. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess let's kind of get into it. Um. 
Right. I wrote. I wrote. I like wrote things to say, but mm. I also wrote them poorly. Nice. So I nice. have to. Yeah. Like I gotta use my brain as we go. It's gonna be interesting. Cool. Cool. So welcome, welcome to the chat slash full episode, whatever it is that you're watching of my favorite alpha. Uh, this is our first episode that we're shoot episode. This is our first episode that we're shooting in New York, uh, and as such, unfortunately, Chloe is not with us. But we have Leon, a director and producer based in New York, and a good friend of mine from high school, um, joining us. Uh, you might have seen some of his work if you've seen uh, either the Reflections music video or the Two Menuets music video that are both on our channel. Thanks for joining us, Leon. Pleasure. I'm, I'm sorry I can't probably be as well as Chloe, but I'll make sure I'll make sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm up to that part. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, our special guest this episode, this month, I guess, yeah, Cameron, Hello. aka Ginger Root. Hello. Woo! Tension is high, yeah. Tension is high, yeah. We do it again. We got um, Cameron from Ginger Root. Yeah. Yosh. Yarkinatta. All right. So just a little introduction yeah. of you. This is Ginger Root. Um, you're from. Oh, sorry, I cut you off. No, that's okay. I know. I'm just. Uh, I'm doing a meme thing where you can do every single camera while I'm waving. Anyway, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Continue. <laughs> Um, you're from Orange County. Mm -hmm. uh, I assume you were born and raised there. Yeah. Um, you uh, started a uh, the first main thing that I could find when I'm like looking you up yeah. musically is Van Stock. Van yeah. Stock. Right? Yeah, Van Stock. Yeah. Right. Uh, so that that was your first kind of like more serious bandish. Yeah, I think that was the first kind of uh, situation where I wanted to write like original music and play with other people and stuff. I had a band before that um, with my high school teacher, right. um, which was a great learning experiment. But I think that was like the first like band band. Mm -mm. Um, and then yeah, and then you know just like kind of life happened. Uh, right. I started writing songs uh, by myself, and then. Um, Ginger Root uh, was the name I decided to go under. I was writing a bunch of songs, and then um, I needed a name to kind of make the project happen, and that's when I decided to, you know, make my first record under that name and stuff. Right. So, yeah. And that that was uh, was it ordinary people or something like that. What was it called? Uh, spotlight people? Spotlight people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what, ordinary people is also something, right? That's, uh, that's something. That's a, something. Um, that's a that's a song by Sly and the Family Stone. That's everyday. That's people. everyday people. Never mind. <laughs> It's, 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 it's probably it's probably it's probably ordinary a people. Song. I don't know. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So, so yeah. spotlight people. So spotlight people. Spotlight yeah. people. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's the first time you use the word, the the name Ginger Root. Yeah. Um. And from there, I, I assume that it's after you release that that you kind of called Matt and Dylan to start performing with you for it. Yeah. I I did. I made spotlight people. Um. I think Matt plays drums on like one or two songs on that record. Oh, okay. Um. And then we we were playing those songs around with a different bass player, um, and then we did uh, South by Southwest unofficially. Mm. Drove twenty five hours to Texas straight, no rest, which is the <laughs> dumbest thing ever. I highly don't I don't recommend doing that ever again. Right. Um, and then after that, um, our old bass player and I we kind of parted ways. He was actually going to be the roadie for like a blues guy, and that's like what he wanted to do. So I was like, yeah. So he went off and did that. And then um, Dylan is really good friends with Matt, and I kind of, or sorry, Matt was really good friends with Dylan, and I kind of knew Dylan from high school and stuff. Right. Um, invited him to play, and we instantly like gelled really well. So the Mahjong Room record, Mahjong Room, Re Mahjong Room record, Ricky, um, that's kind of what we're all playing with. Yes. There you go. The special Japanese edition that yes. you don't even have. I yet. don't have a copy of that. <laughs> I am still waiting on my copy. It's been two years. <laughs> <laughs> Found this at a uh, Tokyo. Uh, no, what is it? Tower. Tower, Tower Records. Yeah, you showed me that at the show. Yeah. I was really excited. Yeah. yeah. And can I ask a question? I'm sorry if you've been over this like a bunch of times, but yeah. where did the name Ginger Root come from? Glad that you asked. Ginger Root. Uh, I wish it was like a like a. Deep meaning story. I was I was watching. I was a huge Wolfpack fan at the time, oh, and yes. there's a there's a video of Jack Stratton chanting about Ginger Root in the middle of a break of a song. Uh, I don't know why. I think it was because I was watching it at like three or four in the morning. I thought it was the funniest thing ever. Um, so when I was about to name the project, which was like a couple days after, um, that was like the only word I was like implanted Ginger in my Root. brain. Ginger yeah, Ginger Root. Root. Um, so I literally like making the Bandcamp page. Like, what's your account name? What's your band name? And I was like. Ginger root, yes. <laughs> and uh, so that's it. Amazing, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, 
we talked about Mahjong Room. Since then, you've released Ricky, you also mentioned, mm -hmm. and you've also released, most recently, City Slicker. Yeah, yeah. Um, City Slicker, I think, is the, it's the first, like, EP. Um, and I think it's the first project that I wanted to kind of experiment, kind of putting on a character mm -hmm. or building a, a world that wasn't, like, maybe, like, truly personal. As for, like, Ricky, everything was about, like, childhood and growing up in nostalgia. Um, but I think uh, City Slicker, I wanted to, like, kind of have fun and and make kind of this thing. Um, and uh, yeah, that came out, uh, I think, like a uh, couple months ago, and, and yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I, I really love the, for lack of a better word, concept albumness mm. of, yeah. of City Slicker. I think it's really cool uh, that you built out that kind of, uh, what's the word? Like, uh, I can't, I'm Flinky. 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 Yeah, Flinky. yeah. yeah. Like a background, yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. I think I think it, it gives it a nice extra layer. Yeah, yeah. Um, it seems like there's less of those these days, no? Oh, mm. for sure. I yeah. think I think I feel like concept album concept albums kind of peaked in like the seventies, <laughs> and then it. I mean, I think that they they had there were so many like large scale concept albums. Yeah, for you know sure. What I mean, like for sure. Like after Pink Floyd has done Dark Side of the Moon, and like their <laughs> whole thing is like this is life in an album. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. On the one hand, that's like the most obvious concept for yeah. a concept album. Yeah, On the yeah. other hand, like, how are you going to beat an album that's been in the Billboard 200 for like 30 years? Right, right. Like, yeah, I think also too, like, I was experimenting with like, I did three full length records, and I and I think like having a full album of like a conceptual thing might kind of get exhausting to the listener. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was like, well, let's try to do like a shorter run, six track world essentially, right. and see how that goes. And um, people uh, thought it was cool, so I'm gonna maybe try to. Pull elements for elements from that and like do that again. Awesome. And yeah. you released that on VHS, right? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> vinyl still is really difficult to manufacture. Right. Um, we're making City Slicker vinyl, but like they just told me it's going to be pushed to like August or something like that. Um, so we did cassettes, and then I was I thought it'd be really funny because there's a lot of videos like v music videos and promo videos for the EP to just like throw it on VHS because mm -hmm. that's like coming from the time that I was trying to like emulate as well. Right. Um, so I found this one like factory in Canada and they're like, how many do you want to do? And I was like, this amount? And they're like, we have to check if that even exists in the entire world. And I was like, great. Um, so yeah, to everyone who wants a to wants a reprint, I think it's like physically impossible to make a reprint because I don't know right. if there's any VHS, that many VHS tapes left in the world. Right. Um, but yeah, so that wow. was super fun. Did the the quirky packaging and like did the the previews before the actual presentation, mm -hmm. that type of stuff. So that was a lot of fun. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Really fun. Fun way to. I mean, for I mean, fun for you, but I think also just fun for everyone watching. What would you? Mean? Yeah. Everyone was like, I. Some people thought it was a joke. So when they got it, they're like, I thought this was vinyl. Like, please send me the record. <laughs> and I was like, I'm sorry, they don't exist yet. But right. I can give you a refund if you really don't want this. But um, right. anyway, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, let me just check my notes to see what else I wanted to talk about. Actually, is that something you think about though? Because you guys just mentioned that mm. how you know, like the top 100 billboards, or whatever. Like, is that something you think about when you make it when you're creating like a project? Is that even in your mind? Not. Not really. I mainly. I really just like making not only music but like things. So like that. making the music videos and like the VHS tapes is a merch item. I think it's just mm -hmm. really fun. Um, and so when writing or when making a project that I don't really think that comes to mind at all. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. If it wasn't fun, I wouldn't be doing it. So. Is there like a certain point or like a place where it comes from? Like you're up mainly your, your ideas or? Um, I, I'll be honest. I think like the reason why I tried to do music like 110% was I went to film school mm -hmm. and I totally got burnt out and I found music as an escape and, um, ended up playing like house shows. Um, instead of like studying basically and making records and music instead of like going to parties or or whatever and um, I found that to be really like uh, cathartic in a way like inner peace yeah kind of yeah, yeah. and I, I thought like and then after graduating getting to like the real film world I was like I gotta make this music thing happen. I gotta get out of here yeah I got, yeah <laughs> um, but I, I, I still hold on to a little bit of filmmaking obviously doing like the promo videos and the music videos and stuff right. so um, but yeah, I think that's where kind of the core of Ginger Root comes from. Is like it was an escape, and hopefully, like people who listen to Ginger Root will also provide some type of escape to somewhere that they may or may not are looking for. I love that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that happened, definitely personally happened to me when I listened to your music. So. <laughs> Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Um, in the future, you have 
a tour with uh, Kuangming coming up? Uh, no, we with, toured. Oh, oh you already speak did. Speak of the devil. Right. Right. Um, we, we're going on the road with uh, Hippocampus. Hippocampus. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's all of April. It's going to be a awesome. long one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully, I think this video should be out before then. So cool. if you see this video and you want to see Ginger Root, if you're in somewhere that he's going on tour with Hippocampus, yeah. check that out. Also, you got a New York date in May? Yeah, we're coming back to New York uh, May. Check the website. I don't remember the well, date. the link below. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then... Uh, 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 mm, Eto. You performed Kimi ni Munekyun mm -hmm. by Yellow Magic Orchestra. Yeah. Why? Like, why did you choose that song and why that artist? Uh, that's that's a loaded question. Um, I, YMO was probably the first uh, the first band like I really fell in love with from Japan. I think it was. I think maybe probably my first encounter with Japanese music. Mm. Um, no toki ni nanka. Mm -hmm. uh, YouTube day, um, they're on Soul Train, and right, it was right, right, right. the the Firecracker clip, and then also the Tighten Up clip. Mm. And um, the funny thing was, is so if this wouldn't have happened, I think I, my ears wouldn't have been prepped for YMO. But I had a statistics teacher in high school who was one of my favorite teachers. Thanks, Mr. Sock. Um, he. Was he was like your music guy? I'm like yeah, and he was like you gotta check out this band called Kraftwerk. I'm like <laughs> oh okay, and he didn't tell me anything about it. He was like yeah, check it out, Kraftwerk's crazy. I'm like okay, and at that point I was listening to like electric like orchestra and like the Beatles. Right. Very not that music at all. Right. It's like the most it's dead, a very, very like, beeps and bops. Very, yeah. yeah. Um, Unemotional. Non. Almost. It's basically non guitar music. Right. Um, so yeah, I like uh, I looked that up and I was like this is crazy sounding and uh, I was into it and I was like listen here and there. And then I found that clip of YMO, and I was like, this is like groovy craft work, like updated craft work. And right. I know like um, all three of them pull a lot from craft work, like as an influence and stuff. And, um, and yeah, so that's, so anyway, that was my encounter with YMO. And then obviously just, I think this song was perfect to do because it's like had a pop sensibility. Um, it was easily, it was like somewhat easy to arrange as just like me and a mm -hmm. Wurlitzer and um, without having like, a wall of synths, you know. Right. I didn't want you to like, you know, find me like seven Moogs or whatever. I mean, it. if you needed it, <laughs> I, <appreciate> it. <laughs> I would have um, done what I could. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I, so that's kind of why I chose that song. I know it was, um, you know, it, it coined that phrase, uh, uh, Mune Kuhn, and also, like, um, yeah, I think it's like definitely a fun one to listen to and to play. And uh, so I know, like, picking a YMO song for this like series is probably like picking one of the most obvious choices of the band, but honestly, like, I think pe more people should know about YMO, like, you know, even more so. And th the thing that I like about YMO so much, too, is, l like, kind of figuring out how much of an impact they had on the world of, um, you know, like, uh, just music from the bubble era and stuff like that. Right. Um, they kind of touched almost anything, and if not, like, they're friends, and it's just basically one big hang, you know? And, yeah. Um, and I, I think that's what slowly drove me into finding more about Japanese music and um, diving deeper into what it had to offer and then just becoming just a huge fan. Mm. Um, so, yeah. I think it's so interesting that, like, cause, because Japan is so small, there's essentially one scene. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not like the U.S. where, like, you got, like, the Muscle Shoals stuff happening yeah. in, what is it, Alabama or whatnot. Yeah, yeah, and you yeah. got, like, the Wrecking Crew happening yeah, in LA. Exactly, and exactly. Got, there was some New York version of that, mm. too, obviously. Mm -hmm. In Japan, you basically got Tim Pinelli. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, cool. Um, do you want to give us a little bio about YMO? A bio about YMO? Yeah, introducing YMO to people who have never heard of YMO. I mean, because it's also, not to go off on another tangent, I keep seeing on things like Reddit and whatnot, like someone will post something about like YMO is being obscure, and then it's always a fight in the comments, like YMO isn't obscure. Yeah, no, <laughs> they're not obscure, but not enough people know them as, as they That's should, funny. you know, and it's like, I feel like I see hmm. that really often. Let me see. I mean, I'm really bad at dates, but I know YMO is Hosono Takahashi and Sakamoto. Mm -hmm. 
the three of them, I know it was going to be, I don't know if it was going to be a fourth member or who was exchanged, but uh, Hiroshi Sato was supposed to be in the band, or I don't remember. But that would have been crazy. I don't know what that would have sounded like. Um, but anyway, yeah, they, they're, it was a project of Hosonos who wanted to create, I think they wanted to make like exotic music in a way, but electronified, I'm not exactly sure. Um, but uh, yeah, they created this whole like world for themselves, this whole brand in a sense. And I know we're like in commercials and like I said, would produce other people's stuff and they right. had all their own solo careers. YMO I think is honestly a great starting point to dive into um, like Japanese, uh, maybe like alternative pop music in a way, like the stuff on Alpha. Um, I'm not talking like J-pop or idol stuff, I, although I know they also had a hand in that type of stuff too. But um, yeah, I'm really bad at giving bios. I'm more now. I'm just t talking about why I like YMO again. But yeah, <laughs> so. I, I think I think that was a great great start for us to kind of mm. continue to discuss. Yeah, um, uh, like, like you mentioned about Hiroshi Sato. Um, I don't think he was ever going to be like a fourth member of the band, mm. but initially I think Hosono was thinking of doing it with him and uh, Tatsuo Hayashi okay, okay. from Timpan Alley. Yeah, yeah. Um, he is Timpan Alley, right? Yeah, he is Timpan Alley, I think. Um, <laughs> uh, and I think, I don't know why Hayashi said no, but Hiroshi Sato was like on the uh, like verge of going to the US. Yeah, he was like, he was like I'm on a trip or whatever. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I'm not interested in Japan. I'm going to the right. U.S. <laughs> right, right. That sounds cool, though. Good luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and I think, from what I understand, Hosono had announced his intention to do uh, YMO at like the big Alpha founding party, where mm. they like until that point, I think in 1978, they established like Alpha Records, Alpha Records, yeah, where yeah. they've actually like been printing the records. Yeah. yeah. Uh, previous to that, they were more there was Alpha and Associates, which was kind of like a production house, and they own a studio. Mm. And then there was Alpha, which is mostly publishing. Mm. Um, and they would like produce a bunch of stuff and then have it released through like RCA and Express and stuff. Mm. Uh, so at the party where they're like, all right, this is the new company, Hasona had kind of announced like, I mm -hmm. am planning to do this thing called Yellow Magic Orchestra. Yeah. Um, and I think at that point he was already talking about doing a cover of Firecracker. Yeah, right. Um, which is not an original composition. It's like not. an obscure like f late 50s or early 60s like exotic music written by like an American or something. Yeah, so I, I don't really know too much about Martin Denny. That's, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, but as I look into him, like the more I'm finding at like He's very involved in Exotica. It's mm -hmm. like his his nickname is like the Godfather of Exotica or something. Oh, okay. Like that. okay. Yeah. So he's like some white guy from I think originally New York that like went around the world mm -hmm. collecting instruments mm -hmm. and and eventually started making a bunch of music that sounded, I guess, to an American or a Exotic. Westerner. Yeah. yeah, like what would yeah Oriental exoticism basically. Right. 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 Um, which also, again, ties back to what you were talking about with Hosono's interest in um, exotis, uh, exotica and yeah. Orientalism. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think YMO is so... Like, the more I think about, like, the ways that he was subverting tropes and the kinds of things yeah. that he was doing, he's so far ahead of his time. Definitely. And I think that, like, the context of when YMO happens throughout his career is also, you know... After his kind of tropical explorations, yeah, um, and I understand that like at around the same time, Ryuichi was also Sakamoto Ryuichi was working on, I forget the album name, the the album that had Thousand Knives. Am I, is, was, Isn't it called one? Thousand Knives? No, I, no, you're right. I think you might be right. Thousand Knives. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that one was dealing more with like synths and like Japanese influence, and yeah. Hosono was mostly like, working still on the idea of less subverting Tropicana, mm -hmm. but like Exotica that comes from nowhere and is less tied to Orientalism. Mm -hmm. you know it's more I mean? of like evoking like a feeling of Exotica than like being rooted in a singular place. Right, yeah, right. Definitely. So I can, I can kind of, you can kind of see the development of these ideas and by the time it gets to Firecracker, yeah. like I'm so curious to know exactly how he got to this place. Yeah. Because again, like even with, with Firecracker, I feel a lot of respect from Hosono towards Martin Denny's original com composition. Oh, definitely, yeah. And a lot of love towards it yeah at the same time 
you know, he is trying to build something that subverts all these Orientalist expectations of what Asians are. Yeah. Uh, even down to the name, he talks about how yeah. um, he felt he found it funny that I mean it's, it's difficult for me to quite understand what he means just because I feel like with the tra Japanese translation mm. for these types of things it's kind of convoluted. Mm -hmm. But he talks about whatever I had read talked about his interest in Japanese society's interest in black magic, mm. and the way that it kind of described it beyond that was um, Japanese people's general, like, desire to be involved with or to consume white and black media mm. and not so much Asian mm -hmm. art or culture or media at mm. that point in history. Yeah. Um, a lot of the musical influences are white influences that were originally black influences, yeah. and then sometimes, like, actual, like, yeah. black music would come to Japan. Yeah. Um, but there was less, like almost like less respect even between like an average Japanese person for like Japanese music in mm, a sense. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny to me because it kind of, I feel like it ties back to the idea of like 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 Black Girl Magic or something. Mm -hmm. Like Yellow Magic Orchestra mm -hmm. is almost Hosono being like, yo, like yeah. we're Asian, we're out here, we're doing <laughs> stuff that yeah. no one else could even consider, could even fathom. Definitely. We're taking all their expectations about us being like, this kind of like behind the times old thing, yeah. and we're coming back with technology that y'all have never seen. Yeah, like, with me with melodies that hint towards what people would deem stereotypical Eastern melodies. Right. I think it's it packaging it if in a way that was super forward thinking and electronic and synthesizer based, only makes sense to be the perfect match for reinvigorating those older melodies or those older scales or totally. stuff like that. Totally. I think also too, which I th I was talking. Um, I was talking to Dan, my manager, about this. Is like what, what I find it really interesting is like what you just mentioned with, you know, um, a lot of uh, like uh, s late '70s Japanese music, like all of '80s Japanese music came from a lot of '70s um, American music, you know, um, and then now you know the world having come back to discover that era of music in Japan are influencing, especially like like musicians like me. There, it's kind of all, it's this constant back and forth of remixing, you know, and then hopefully one day when, you know, Jindrut, you know, gets into more Japanese uh, people's, uh, Japanese listeners or whatever, it'll be another like kind of, kind of pendulum of being like trading back and forth these inspirations, you know, but then, you know, like for me, like filtering what I've heard, because growing up with both that original American music that influenced that Japanese music that was influenced by American music and then me putting my American Asian spin on Japanese influenced American music is like basically what I think is so fascinating about all of this. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree. I know we, we've talked on the phone before about yeah. um, Hosono's like how he saw 50s Americana type music hearing yeah. it on like the military radio mm -hmm. and it reminding him of oh, there's something I'm realizing so much about Hosono's attention to location. Like, none of Hosono's mm. works exist in a vacuum. Yeah, yeah. Which I think is really unusual, because yeah. I don't think it's something that a lot of musicians really consider. Yeah. I know when I was reading, like, the... I can't... David Byrne book. Mm -hmm. He talks a lot in the beginning of that about like how he sees music having developed across different, you know, with European chamber music and mm -hmm. whatnot because of the churches, yeah. and then African beats and rhythms mm -hmm. because of the open plains type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And like he acknowledges a lot of like how your um, the the space in which you listen to the music completely changes that experience. Yeah. But I think Hosono in particular, like even with his interest in like background music and yeah. like kaio ongaku or what it's not kankyo ongaku. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, did he? Did I feel like I read somewhere he was also into like vaudeville? Is that also something? I think that that kind of goes back to like his interest in like the Americana stuff. For sure. Yeah, I think he's got this anything from like the 30s to 50s. Yeah. Like he he's probably one of the most. Uh, knowledgeable well, you of can that era. Of you can US hear music. that in his in his solo stuff and also in YMO stuff and in the arrangements of things and like the really big close chords that they choose to use or mm -hmm. everything and then also or it opening up and be you know very dramatic and stuff. I think comes from um, I think what's interesting about like all three of them, their perspective on 
basically viewing America as like a melting pot, mm. but as an outsider perspective, not being in the melting pot, but like watching it boil and being like, how can I use that as an influence to make something uniquely different, but yet paying homage and thanks to like this original source material. Right. Yeah. And that whole like paying homage stuff, like again, that, that's still really like, it interests me how mm. much like he is, again, subverting tropes and going against clearly what they were doing, Definitely. but with a lot of love and a lot of respect. And I think that's really unusual almost and interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's, that's, that's a little bit about YMO. YMO, yeah. Um, wh one of the other things about YMO that I want to talk about is, is why we have all this, are you hungry? You want some food? You don't want to eat on, on camera? Not you don't on camera. Eat on camera? Don't they eat? Go to it. Yeah, those, those, oh. those, those. Um, so this is our makeshift, not at all kotatsu kotatsu. Right. Uh, what you, uh, kotatsu kaigi, right? Yeah, kotatsu kotatsu kaigi. little version of the Great. kotatsu kaigi. Yeah. Uh, do you know the story of the kotatsu kaigi? Uh, I don't know if it's the right one, and I might be just referencing like this YouTube video I saw of like they did an NHK thing where they're all around a kotatsu. And so I think that was that was in reference to the to original, the original one. Okay, kotatsu cool. Kaigi. Okay, so yeah, please uh, enlighten me. Um, Hopefully I'm all correct with all this stuff. <laughs> this fact checking this is going to be so much fun. <laughs> um, so uh, on February 19th, 1978, mm. uh, that's the day that Hosono met both Takashi Kiro and Sakamoto Ryuichi mm -hmm. and explained to them the concept of YMO and they decided to get on board. Mm. And it happened at Hosono's house at his kotatsu and they supposedly were drinking tea, had onigiri, and were eating mikan. I see. Yeah. I see. Um, and so that happened after the recording for Femme Fatale. Was it on this? Yeah. So Femme Fatale has both. Um, um, yeah, uh, Takahashi and Ryuichi on it. I see. And Hosono had invited them to come record on this album with the with, because he was already considering asking them for YMO. I see. I see. Uh, so this is after he'd been rejected by Hiroshi Sato, um, and he'd gone to his manager like, mm -hmm. I don't know who to ask. Yeah, who yeah. should I ask? Yeah. And his manager's like, How about this Sakamoto kid? Yeah. And he was like, "All right, cool." So I don't know the timeline, but Thousand Knives came out after that rec after this record, right? Thousand Knives was should be after this, but before that. Yeah, I, that I know. Yeah, it was. I don't know the years. So I feel 78. like seventy-eight or seven. Yeah, okay. Because this is the this is seventy-eight, and the Japanese version of that is it's also seventy-eight. Seventy-eight. Okay. So and recording for this, mm. I believe it's like June to September, seventy-eight. Um, so I'd assume that Thousand Knives was recorded before that, but also in 1978. I have an OG pressing of this, and I'm very excited that I own it. Uh, U.S. version or Japanese version well, of the U.S. version? Uh, it's the U.S. version. I think that's, I mean, I don't know. I think, I think that is, like, the well, one Well, it's I'm not talking. a reissue. So. It's not <laughs> a reissue. It is definitely not a reissue. <laughs> um, it's funny, actually, can I tell my story about, I was telling you about this record, about, like, the the story about just the record collecting because we're on the topic right, right, of right, records. Right, yes, please. So like I was trying so hard to find this record because at that time I was just in high school and I heard Firecracker. <laughs> Didn't listen to the whole record at all. I was like, I want Firecracker on vinyl so bad. Um, and so I went to this record swap meet thing um, in Orange County and I was like on the hunt for this because I couldn't find it in stores. It's funny is all the stores had a Yellow Magic Orchestra section but they were all empty, which interesting. was really interesting. Um, and so anyway, I go up to this guy. I'm like, do you have any YMO? He's like, I just have, I have Naughty Boys. And I'm like, I don't want that because it it's not this. But I <laughs> wish I bought that because this is a fantastic record. Um, hearing it after the fact. I also just noticed I love how Hosonas is the OB strip. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, so that's my story is like my regret of not buying that record when I saw it because it was like maybe $22 at the time. Oh. Which, and I don't know if that point, if it was repressed or if it was an original but anyway, he was, that guy actually kind of uh, made me think that Yellow Magic Orchestra was Sakamoto's project. 
because he because he told me that he's like oh he writes for movies and like he's an actor or he acts sometimes and so I was like oh man and he didn't talk about the other two at all mm -hmm. so that made me think that for the longest time it wasn't until Dylan thank you Dylan was like yeah no it was like all Hosonos and I, was I like, grew up I'm, thinking the same thing as well really yeah. I feel like a lot of people think that way. Oh, I mean because oh. Sakamoto is his his name is way more well known mm. um, and I think like he's had a lot more I mean I think uh, one of the things that it is is like Merry Christmas Mr. Lawrence yeah like his face is in it yeah, a lot definitely. Um, and I think that definitely helped make him a star outside of just the music yeah definitely um, yeah that, but, that even changed how Japan looks at movies just like how influential they are yeah right, just right, because right. he was in that movie it yeah. changed everything yeah yeah absolutely and I, I feel like we also have to talk a little bit about just the fact that like this is such a weird YMO album. Yeah. Like the the whole cutesy like yeah. poppy thing that they do. Yeah. Um, is so. It's so. F like from out of nowhere for YMO. Definitely. Um, and I also I realized I, I know I told you over the phone that they that they'd created that phrase with this song. Yeah. I re-researched to find out that they had popularized it. Yeah. And that the phrase had actually been... Oh, what's her name? Names, names, names. Uh, Kumiko Watanabe. Mm. Kumiko Watanabe, her first album, like the, the catch copy for it, was something that had... Kyun in it. Mune and Kyun in it. I see. And so her, like, her fan club in the 80s was called, like, Mune Kyun Club. Ah, uh, okay. And so someone on the YMO side had to go to her to get permission. Really? Because it wasn't trademarked or anything. But yeah, it but it's like, hey, we don't want to we don't want to step on your toes here. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, like, I think the other thing was they were pretty much ready to, like, quit YMO mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. Um and I think their goal with this was to have a number one hit as YMO. And I think they did that. They got number two. Oh. Well, they got really close. They got really close. It's the thought that counts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think they specifically asked um, Takashi Matsumoto yeah. to write catchy lyrics. Got it. To write something that's poppy and catchy and yeah. radio friendly. Yeah. And um, they were so close. Like, one of the songs that kept them out of first place is a Hosono produced and written song for love Matsuda Seiko. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I love that. Um, so that hit number one while that was number two. Got it. Um, yeah, and I think this just also like this whole concept of like three cute ojisan. <laughs> it's such like a the music video U -turn. is pretty wild. Right, the whole chore choreography. And oh whatnot. yeah, like, it's definitely. It's something to be influenced by. I love it. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's just like a really unusual and interesting um, album for them. Yeah. And something that wouldn't have happened if it weren't for the tie-up for this original song happened. Because yeah. I don't think... They might have been happy with like doing like a, a final tour and not even putting out yeah, any right. music. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, you want to explain what a kotatsu is? Uh, Being the, the, the one... Non Japanese at all, person uh, between the three of us? It's like a. Atatakai, Kimochi, Fuyu no Toki ni, Swate, like a really warm snack table. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Nice! 1000%. Great. So today is actually the, the 39th, no, 35th. Anniversary, no, 34th anniversary and a day since oh, that, isn't well, it? Oh, there you go. So next year is the 45th 45. anniversary of the founding moment of YMO. Wow. Yeah. So we're, 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 we're a year early, but we're, we're celebrating. Early. That's okay. We're That's celebrating. Okay. Do you want to listen to the song once? Uh, sure. I, I'd love your, your, your commentary on like things that you noticed about the song okay. through having to arrange it for this. Okay, you okay. You know what I mean? Like, Anything that's like new to you about the song Got it. from this experience. Actually, one thing I did notice, like I was reading online that the, the drum machine on the original track oh. is supposed to kind of mimic like a Japanese Matsuri rhythm. Really? Like, don't, don't. Do dosko don. Oh, don. interesting. Like, I'm not sure if that's exactly what it is, but huh. like, that's I read that, huh. and I thought it was really interesting that like, 
because obviously that that wasn't a consideration for your drum beat. Yeah. So that alone, yeah. I feel like gives it this like slightly different feel, which again goes back to that whole like yeah. borrowing from and being influenced yeah, by. Yeah, yeah. I think it's really cool. Definitely. I think the thing that was interesting trying to arrange it was it is really complex, um, but like, and I think this is what what the core. What happens with the core of every songwriting is like if you can break it down to the chords and the melody, and it like still sticks, mm. it like that's like a good song. And I think because they wanted to go after that pop sensibility, when I was just playing, like before I added the drum machine to my arrangement, it was just chords. I was just trying to learn the song, so mm. chords and um, the vocal me uh, the vocal melody, it like was so fun to sing mm. that I think that it was like even though like now I've sung it so many times. Um, <laughs> Like I'm not sick of it. We actually might arrange it for full band and do it like at the New York show or something. Oh, or that would be so cool. Because yeah. originally we were going to do this full band, and I had ideas like for the bass to be on, a, you know, a pick bass, and then mm. the drums is obviously not a drum machine, and then you know all these types of stuff. Um, I also learned a lot of uh, new words uh, when trying to figure out how to sing the song. Right, um, your, your lyric sheet was in Japanese. That blew my mind. And with, with kanji and stuff, <laughs> like... It was it was kanji and then uh, hiragana next to it, but consecutively. So I would all, when I was rehearsing, I got tripped up because I would read, read like, ingashi and then ingashi again. And I was like, that's not right. But anyway. Um, but yeah, I think, going back to the song, I think it's funny because I also really enjoy uh, a good dose of, like, idol music. Mm -hmm. And I think this is, like, a perfect blend of like the super sweet candy like idol pop sensibility with YMO substance. Right. And I think that's why this song did really well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think also to just it's a good way of showing how heavy synth work can make a song feel not as daunting as people think. It's like oh, I'm gonna throw a wall of synths on things, you know. Right, right, right. It's also the crazy thing too about arranging synths is like it's very similar to arranging like an or orchestral performance too, where all these synths have to take up a certain amount of frequency space. And the fact that, I mean, YMO obviously before this are, were masters of it, but to do it in a way that is with a pop sensibility in mind for YMO, because I know they also did this for, you know, other mm. artists and stuff, is just super impressive. And so to di dissect that was super, it was a great exercise. It was super fun to like hear why you can hum every synth part, every mm, lyric part, mm, you know, that type of stuff. I think right. that's what I learned when I ran through the song, like, you know, 50 times or whatever. Right. Very interesting. Yeah. Thank yeah, you definitely. for that new perspective. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Of course. I'm going to slowly just, I feel like we heard, mo I mean, there's nothing yeah, else. Yeah, you, you can pause it. Right. I know I cut my version short. Because um, you didn't want to fade. As you well, also, I, well, actually, originally I was going to be like, just fade out the video like while I was playing and I'm like I don't want to be that guy do like make you guys do more work and fade it out or whatever so I was like I'll do my own ending and, and also because there's one verse I didn't sing but I, I was like I don't have time to memorize more words so I was like that's, I'm gonna just do a, a piano break <laughs> instead of fair. a verse so. that's fair yeah <laughs> is it the it, Italian it was after Italian it's the verse after that I but isn't I, that in, in Italian no, oh, the the speaking, the, the speaking yeah, bit. Right, right. Yeah, I was like, oh, maybe I should also learn the Italian bit. And I was like, <laughs> my brain is overloaded as it is right now. Alrighty. Since we're running out of time, I'm going to really quickly run through a couple trivia questions for you. Oh, no. Yeah, fun, 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 fun. On the Autobahn. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, crap reference. There you go. Um, so who were the first two artists that was originally approached for the YMO project? Why did I... Maybe I should just skip that one. I'm I'm bad at names, but I know one was uh, Hiroshi Sato, and I don't know the I don't remember the other person's name. Tatsu Hayashi. Got it. But fifty percent will round it up and say a hundred. Okay. Um, uh, name the four bands that Hosono was a part of prior to YMO. Um, does that one count? The no. Okay. I, well, I, I, Tin, Tin Pan Alley, yeah. the Happy End. Um. Uh. It's not satanic, which we'll call it band, that was Takahashi, right? Yeah. Um, so I think it's sadistic, not satanic. Satanic, sadistic. <laughs> um, uh, why am I blinking on the third name? I don't know all four. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, would it help if I said 
two of those four are actually the same band with a different name. I didn't know that. I'm learning so many new things. I'm a fake fan. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so you missed April Fool. Oh, okay, right? okay. And okay. Tim Panelli is Caramel Mama is Tim Panelli. Oh, oh, okay, Caramel Mama, right. That's like the most rare record of his, right? Yeah, but they were he they worked they were like they were kind of like the wrecking crew. So there's a bunch of records out there right. that are either Tim Pan Alley or right. Caramel Mama from one of their where they did studio work right. for session work. Now since I'm like in student mode, like was it Happy End then Tim Pan Alley or is it Tim Pan Alley then like when did they change their name? Uh, it was April. You know what? We're, we're running out of time. Let's we are. It was April Fool, Happy End, Tim Pan Alley. Got it. Cool. Well, April Fool, Happy End. Caramel Mama Tim Pan Alley. Got it. Tim Alley's last. Caramel Alley first. Okay. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Who went on tour with YMO during their first U.S. tour? Other uh, than the, the three OGs. That I, I that I don't know, to be honest. Uh, you know Hideki Matsutake, or Matsutake Hideki, the engi- the really? pr- programmer guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was like he the a, unofficial fourth member of YMO. He's the guy that would push buttons on the stage. <laughs> yeah. Was he also the guy that was like the Ningyo? Like they had a they had a performance I know saying where like they were interviewed and like what does this guy do? He was like oh he's just he's just on stage. Is that <laughs> I the think same it's guy? possible. Okay, all right. I have to. I I can't see. Confirm I feel that. like I know really small obscure things like that, but I don't know the the four band. <laughs> I think that's really funny. Anyway, if if that was wrong. It will just say, nope. Okay, <laughs> it'll all just right. Add a, nope. All right, great. All right. Um, uh, what did Yukihiro Takahashi do during live performances for this song? Um, well, he... You mean, like, perform... Like, he played drums, didn't he? Well, so for this song, he didn't, because they just let the drum machine do its thing. Oh. I'm thinking... I can only think of the music video. I know they crawl around, cl- crawl around on the floor. <laughs> But see, here's another thing. I don't know that, but I know that there was a performance where Sakamoto couldn't come to the session in the studio, so they just broadcast a VHS tape of him in the studio on a CRT TV <laughs> while playing to the track, and it was just Hosono's and Takahashi singing to Sakamoto. I don't know why. I know <laughs> things like that, but I don't know. What, what did he do? Uh, he played air guitar while singing. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> Equally as great. Because he does most of the singing on that song. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, was that right. album too? Yeah. All right. Real quickly, some ye- some some Japanese questions. <laughs> I feel like you're gonna most know most of them. Okay. Oh, Yellow Magic Orchestra. <laughs> I'm really bad at katakana. Oh. Stadio uh, <laughs> A. B. I don't know. Shibaura Studio A. It's it's uh, Alpha's main studio for oh. Alpha and Associates, where they recorded a lot of these records, got including it. most of these YMO. Got it, got it. I'm failing, guys. Uh, I it's just a one out of two so far. Uh, that means Eastern Wind, but I don't know. Uh, Higashi Kaze. I don't know. So, uh, Tompu. Tompu. Oh, the track on um, that guy. Yellow Magic Tompu. Got it. I would have called it Higashi Kaze as well. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Whew. Uh, <laughs> namami? Namami? Na, semi? Na, I, what? Shoga. Shoga? Uh-huh. It means ginger. Ginger root. <laughs> I know the Chinese Yeah, I thought, I thought because of that, this would be like... I was like... I thought it was going to be like that. No. I'm a fraud. Okay. Um... Oh wait, that one, you know what? Let me change the order here. Let me change the order here. I'm failing. This video should just be canceled, man. <laughs> uh Hosonos. Uh Sakamoto Ryuchi. Oh, then it's I don't know it's Takahashi. That's what I wanted you to think. Oh, really? It's well it's uh Taka No. No, Mura? Uh-huh. Mura <laughs> I don't know what that one is. Uh, I don't know. I give up. Kuni Murai. Murai Kunihiko. Oh! The okay. founder of Alpha Music. Yes, okay. Thanks. Sorry, I just, uh... Sorry, Satchel. Sumimasen, <laughs> <laughs> just send this job. Final one. Uh... Takahashi. Yeah. That's, I feel like that's pretty good. Oh, I'm so bad with names. Hosono. Sakamoto. Okay, that was like 10 and I got 3 right. That's a 30%. <laughs> I failed. I'm not allowed to be here. I'll take a 30 man. All right, all right. I, I honestly don't if he was the pers- If he was the professor of this group, I would. <laughs> he would have gave me a passing group. It was a success. When you were like kanji test, I thought you were going to say like, you know, 
road signs or <laughs> stuff you'd see in a textbook. I'm not going to do it. All right, all right, all right, all right. Last questions. Okay. Last questions. Okay. Besides YMO,、mm. who are your favorite alpha artists, slash, which alpha artists or albums or songs are you most influenced by?、Um, one of my favorite albums probably is、uh, Jun To. Um, Tokawa Jun. To- Tokawa Jun is、uh, her album,、uh, Suki Suki Dai Suki. That's the name of it, right?、Mm. Yeah.、Um, that one's a phenomenal album. That's Alpha, right? It is. It's、okay. blowing up on TikTok recently. I know that. I just want to say I knew about that album before TikTok. <laughs> just want to say <laughs>、um, that. And then、um, the、uh, Maria song that we were just talking about before Disco Gal. Disco Gal. And also.、Um, Maria. <laughs> Well, that's Disco Gal.、Um, the, um, oh. Kono mama na na ni, da na 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 na. Kono mama na na ni. Or whatever, I forget. Anyway. Also, Maria? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kokoro no mama ni? I think that's what it's called. That sounds right. Kokoro no mama ni. <laughs> you have the rights to play, so you play it. <laughs> that is very much alpha. Okay, well, that I was, like, re- that was I like recorded this guy. in the US. Yes, that, that yeah. yeah. Fukamachi Jun.、Um, yeah, just show, show everyone your phone so that they can zoom in to the tiny, tiny text. Exactly.、Uh, Minako, right? Minako is, yeah, Alpha. Although、yeah. some of her early stuff was recorded by Alpha and released on RCA. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know.、Um, I mean, the Pacific album, album, which is like Hosonas, but like a bunch of powerhouse, that's also、yeah. a fantastic record. Um, I think that's another weird one where we own publishing for it, but I don't think like, the whole thing was under Alpha, but I think they own publishing for all the Hosono parts. Oh, I, I see. What about like, Hosono、uh, solo stuff? That's true. Haraisa、huh? and、yeah. uh, Phil Harmony. Those are, are both. both fantastic records.、Yeah. Um, it's okay, you don't have to name every single record that we、okay. have. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot.、Um, It's like the same thing where, like, you know, you're talking to someone and you're getting to know them, and they're like, hey, what type of music do you listen to? And you're like, I don't know if I've ever heard a song in my life.、Um, Leon, did you want to take a question? I forgot that question. I was literally trying to remember it, but I forgot it. So I'm just going to go with another question that's in my mind. Come on, you. So, I mean, the song you, you just played,、um, it roughly translates to, like, I got like, what, I got a crush on you or something like that, you know? Yeah. Like,、mm-hmm. and I, it's like, Like you said, it's, you know, at the time, I, I anticipated, I, I could imagine that kind of, those kind of songs haven't been coming out like that, especially p- from people like YMO.、Mm, yeah. And then, and so not just playing it now, and especially, I don't know, since Valentine's Day was just in the corner. You、yeah. know, when you're playing that song, were you sending that out to like, someone you had in mind? Or, you know, <laughs> no, you know? that's a great question. No. 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 <laughs> no. I, keep,、uh, oh, hi, hi. I was you know, right there.、So、I was sending it to.、Um, Damn. I was sending to Hosonos and Takashi and Sakamoto. I, I was like trying that. To, I, I was like, like saying,、um, この動画、uh, Hosono さん、Sakamoto さん、Takashi さん、見るかどうかわからないけど、僕の感謝伝えてほしいです。素敵な音楽作ってくれて、本当に感動しました。いいな。伝わると思う、yeah. その気持ち。僕の,僕の演奏、えー、いかがでしょうか Zehi, then Laku, stay. Please, <laughs> please, dro- please、uh, connect with me in the DMs. Thank you. I love how you get more and more quiet because you, for some reason, not confident that you have the right words, but like all the words come out right. Here's, here's the thing, and I will say this really quick it's like, I, so I, I've been learning Japanese for a year and a half, but I, I have never really s p o k e it. Only a year and a、It's, half? You're so, like, I'm still like, I don't know if I. Cause,、oh, honestly, because I don't, I don't have any like, language speaking partners. I don't know. So I'm like, well, now,、Call、yeah. Me. Whenever, whenever you're bored, whenever you just need someone to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I haven't like, gotten the opportunity to practice.、Um, so that's why I'm very. Jishin n a i d e s Mitcha hazakashi. Give it three years, you're going to be a better Japanese speaker than me because my Japanese、yeah. is s h o l e I'm、That's、starting to forget <laughs> in the other realm of things. Like, <laughs> They're dropping words left. You know, like, like, chu, chu, gakko, chu, chu, gakko, go, no, Chinese. Chu, gokko, chu, gokko, go. Yeah, chu, gokko, go, mo, benkyo, shte, mas, nano, de, like, chotto, atama, ga, 
、えー、真っ白になっちゃった。そう。Anyway。Cool、um,。よろしくお願いします。よろしくお願いします。I feel like that was more like a like a just like an automatic response.、Yeah. <laughs> It didn't feel like I was like, who am I saying? Like you're saying Yoroshiku to YMO, and we're just like Yoroshiku. I, I bowed and Josh bowed as well. Yeah, yeah we、no. all bowed. <laughs> I, this is so. Actually, you want to say hi, Josh, real quick? Hi, Josh. Bye, Josh. Bye.、Um, any last.、Uh, yes, yeah, hi, any last. Hi, Josh. What are some of your other influences?、Mm. Other than Alpha as an artist? Yeah.、Um, and what are some of the newer artists, both in Japan and overseas, that、mm. you are into right now?、Um, I think、um, non Japanese artists. I, I know I grew up listening to a lot of Motown and Soul stuff, like Jackson 5 and、mm-hmm. um, Stevie Wonder. Um, but I also, in high school, I listened to like, a lot of power pop stuff. Like,、um, like I mentioned before, like、uh, ELO, not YMO. I listened to a lot of ELO, and like, Paul McCartney's solo stuff is always a big influence for me.、Um, I feel like in my subconscious, I'm trying to be Paul McCartney if he wrote idol songs. Like, that's like, what I'm trying to, like, the energy I'm trying to evoke.、Um, but yeah, a, a lot of that type of stuff.、Um, and newer bands, like, I, like,、uh, Like,、uh, Kira Kira Benito would be a big influence on me. Um, uh, Metronomy, which is a UK group.、Um, and、uh, Wolfpack, obviously, is a, is a, was a big、uh, part of、um, like, wanting to make like, kind of more groove centric music.、Um, and then I guess like, contemporary stuff or whatever would be those people. And then also,、um, I don't know if it's an influence, but I am a big Chai fan. I think、um, they're doing some cool stuff, as well as.、Um, Amai Wana,、uh, which is,、uh, is she actually, I saw her song randomly on, on Twitter and she's, she's from Japan. She's also really into like bubble、uh, era culture stuff. And、uh, she sent me a cassette. I don't know if she'll see this, but thank you very much for that.、Uh, but I think her stuff's great too, as well.、Um, and、uh, yeah, same thing. I am blanking on every single piece of music I've ever heard in my entire life.、Uh, and final question. Uh, is there any specific artist that you'd like to do what you did and come cover, like that you think would be really cool if they did an alpha thing, or any specific alpha song or artist that you'd like to see covered by someone? Oh man,、uh, I'd really love to see someone try to take a stab at any of June's stuff.、Mm. You know? Yeah, wow. I know that's a huge, that's a like, large shoes to fill,、yeah. but I'm dying to hear someone that like, really enjoys her as an artist.、Mm. You're being waved down. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me.、Uh, I'm going to put this with you because I think it's just funnier that it's in your pile. <laughs> I, got, I already got a pile going on.、Right? I know. That's, that, I'm, just, I'm just adding. Cool. Cool. Thanks, guys. Pleasure. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching the third episode of My Favorite Alpha. I hope you liked what you saw, and please do like the video and subscribe to our channel. We have another exciting video planned for April, so please keep an eye out for that.、Uh, and I also did just want to clarify about what I said about YMO not having any number one hits.、Uh, they did have a couple number one albums, but they didn't have a number one single in Japan. So, just want to clarify that. See you soon.